Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we'll be checking out the 2015 Nissan Rogue. This is a small four-door SUV with seven seats and this particular trim is the SV all-wheel drive. LED daytime running lights. This vehicle has a coefficient of drag of 0.33. MSRP as tested comes to 29610 Checking out the trunk, you can open it using the key fob. Good amount of storage space back here, 60-40 split folding rear seats, and as you can see also you've got two additional seats which you can fold up, uh, and it does lay flat pretty much, and then you have a little storage compartment under here, uh, and then underneath of which there is a tow hook, but there is no spare located underneath this. Okay, let's have a look under the hood. So checking out the engine bay, things are somewhat cramped in here, but there is no engine cover, so props to Nissan for keeping things functional. Checking for serviceability, we've got our engine coolant reservoir over here, we've got our windshield washer fluid, your alternator is up front and easy access to that. You've got your engine oil fill and engine oil dipstick. Moving along, you've got your battery here, plenty of easy access to that, your brake fluid reservoir, and your air filter which has some quick clips for access. This is a 2.5 liter gasoline inline four cylinder, naturally aspirated, dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, and variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust. It has an aluminum block and head, produces 170 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, and 175 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. Now, following the path of the intake air, our intake comes in up high in the front here, passes back to the intake air filter, where it then travels along to the electronically controlled throttle body and then into this plastic intake manifold. Now, you can see this piece right here, which actually comes in before the throttle body. Uh, I'm assuming this has to do something with induction noise, uh, whether that be reducing it or somehow altering the induction noise. Now, plastic intake manifolds are becoming increasingly common. Uh, it's pretty much everything I've seen on all the vehicles I've tested has used a plastic intake manifold. Uh, and the reason being, you know, these are going to save some weight. Uh, they're going to save cost. And, you know, they're not going to have quite as much uh, heat absorption as a metal would. On the flip side, this probably isn't going to have the durability of an aluminum or a metal out there. Uh, but that said, I'm sure they can engineer it so that it's going to last long enough uh, for their warranty. And they don't have to really worry about this being any issue. Then after that air travels through this plastic intake manifold and into the engine, it passes out the exhaust coming out the front here. The exhaust travels back through a single pipe, entering the muffler and then exiting through a single tailpipe. Power is sent through a CVT transmission to all four wheels. At all four corners, 17-inch wheels wrapped in 225 over 65 Bridgestone tires. 11.8-inch ventilated disc brakes up front. This is matched with a McPherson strut style suspension. So checking out the right side, you can see the steering linkage coming in here. You've got the lower control arm behind that. There you've got your anti-roll bar, which is connecting up with the strut. And everything in here is pretty much painted or coated to prevent rust. In the rear, 11.7 inch ventilated disc brakes. This is matched with a multi-link style suspension. And you can see up here a rubber stop so that if this upper control arm does reach maximum travel, it's not gonna be slamming into the frame. Instead, it's got this rubber stop to prevent damage. You've got separate spring and shock absorber. So checking out the other side, you can see the shock absorber mounting down with the lower control arm. The upper control arm actually looks to be made of aluminum, so good use of lightweight materials. And then to the right here, you can see the anti-roll bar with the blue piece of tape on it. Behind the anti-roll bar, you can see the CV joint coming in because this is all-wheel drive, so you've got power going to all four wheels. Okay, let's check out the interior. Keyless entry, and there's also a button on the door handle which you can use to unlock the vehicle. Cloth seats all around, and it is electronically adjustable for the driver. Okay, checking out the interior. These cloth seats are actually probably some of the most comfortable seats I've sat in. Good amount of cushion to them and very soft. I really like these seats, very comfortable. Now as far as leg room, plenty of leg room. You don't have to worry about your knees hitting anything. Uh, you do have hard touch to the left and right, uh, but plenty of space under here for your legs and plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel. Now speaking of the steering wheel, kind of a plasticky feel to it, but it feels okay. You've got a lot of control on here, so you can scroll through uh, various things. And the center here, you can look at your average fuel economy, a compass, uh, your satellite radio, uh, some driving aids, your tire pressure, uh, warnings, and then settings, how much fuel you have uh, until empty, and then your average speed. So a good amount of options through that menu. You can adjust your volume on here, uh, manage your Bluetooth audio controls, as well as your cruise control. 
Now you do have an automatic driver's window and power windows all the way around, electronic adjustment for your mirrors. Now to the left of the steering column, you've got a little control panel. So you have a button here to turn off the vehicle dynamic control, a sport button here, which basically keeps the engine RPMs up higher by altering the transmission gearing. Uh, you have a power lift gate, which you can open from the driver's seat and then the ability to turn that feature on or off. You've got an eco mode, which keeps your RPMs lower, trying to save fuel economy. You have a lane departure warning system, which you can turn on or off. You can lock the all-wheel drive system. And then you also have a hill descent control, which will be available to use if you're going less than 15 miles per hour and you have it locked in all-wheel drive. And here you have some adjustment for your trip setting and the brightness of your display. Uh, you've got the large tack and coolant on the left, and then the speedometer and fuel gauge on the right. Now moving on to the infotainment system here, decent sized screen, uh, you can hook up uh, various apps with your smartphone, you've got navigation, satellite radio, auxiliary inputs, uh, everything in there. So pretty straightforward, simple to use. Now moving on to the climate control system, pretty simple system here, you've got the dual climate zones. Uh, the only thing you know is you are going to have to deal with this one thing which you just select between all the different settings, so not exactly uh, the most user friendly thing, but other than that it's very simple, straightforward, easy to use. Down below you have USB connectivity as well as an auxiliary port and a 12 volt power outlet. Now looking at storage, you've got some space over here. You have a little space right in front of the gear shift. You've got these two cup holders and then this small storage space behind them, which I really like. Things like this are perfect for holding a phone and a wallet. You can just slide those in there. They can sit there while you drive, take them out. I love that. Heated front seats with both high and low settings. You also have this two compartment center console here, uh, so you can have different storage in there, and you also have a 12 volt power outlet, and then you've got your glove compartment here. Now, looking at visibility out the front is pretty good overall, and to the sides, plenty of visibility. Checking out the rear, decent size rear window back there. You do have some large panels uh, in the back for those rear columns, but aside from that, pretty good. And checking your blind spot, plenty of visibility there. You also do have a rear view camera. Let's see if I can pull that up. And it also has a 360 degree view of your car so you can kind of get an entire idea of what's going on on all four corners uh, and all the different sides of your vehicle. So good for the camera there. And you also do have blind spot monitoring uh, so that will notify you if someone's coming up uh, on your left or right in your blind spot. Okay, sitting in the rear, I have the front driver's seat adjusted to where I will be driving. I'm 6'1", and as you can see, actually a good amount of legroom back here, and these seats are actually really comfortable just like the front seats. So really nice, comfortable back here, plenty of legroom, uh, and plenty of headroom as well. So a good, comfortable experience back here. You also do have these AC vents in the center, and you've got your power windows, and then you do have this fold down for uh, some cup holders as well as an armrest. Now if I scoot over to the center here, a little bit more cramped, I actually still do have headroom above me, uh, it's just a little bit more cramped for my legs depending on where these seats are at, uh, but it certainly could work, you could fit five people in here if you needed to, and now let's go check out the back seats. Okay, so we're going to figure out how to get into these rear seats, it's all about willpower, enforcing yourself back there, uh, we can fold that down, fold this up. And crawl in here. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. Um, okay, so, uh, well, I suppose if uh, it was the end of the world and you were being chased by something and had to fit seven people in here, you know, ideally they wouldn't have legs. Uh, they could have a head, you know, there's a little bit of space up here, but honestly not that much. So these rear seats, um, I guess I'm just a little bit confused by them, but they are here nonetheless. Uh, if you have some small passengers to throw in the back, I suppose it might happen. Okay, let's take it for a test drive. Push button start. Now this car weighs a little bit over 3,500 pounds 
and it only has 170 horsepower. So as you can imagine, uh, acceleration is nothing all that impressive. Actually, the Nissan Juke, which is significantly lighter than this, uh, even has more power than it. So that's kind of surprising uh, to see, especially since this is, you know, all-wheel drive. But regardless, you know, it is a very comfortable ride. Cabin noise is pretty good, and the seats matched with the suspension, it's actually very comfortable. Now, the engine has a couple different modes, and so you can put it in normal mode, which is what I have it in now, uh, and I can also select it and put it in sport mode. Now, there aren't paddle shifters, so there's no way to manually shift uh, between preset gear selections, uh, but that said, when you do put it in sport mode, it kind of keeps the revs up high so that it feels a bit more peppy, a little more nimble, uh, and it is a little bit more fun to drive, for sure, because it keeps those revs, you know, right around 5,000 RPM or above, and so you can get a decent amount of torque down while you're doing that. The other thing, when you know, when you are on the brakes, when you do have it in sport mode, it will maintain those revs up pretty high. So now they're floating at about 3,000, uh, even when I'm not on the gas, so that you do get response once you put your foot back down. Now you can switch it over to Eco, and that'll drop the revs down all the way. Uh, and so once you do have it in Eco, it's going to keep the revs lower. It's not going to be quite as responsive when you put your foot down uh, or accelerate quite as hard. And, you know, the, the goal there, obviously, is to gain some fuel economy. I do like the throttle pedal feel. I don't think there's anything unusual about it. Uh, pretty straightforward and nice progression as you put your foot down. And the brake pedal feel also, it's coming in this corner here. You know, it doesn't have a whole lot of travel and actually has a good feel to it as well. Not too much body roll. Um, that said, it, it does certainly exist. Uh, so a little bit of body roll, but you know, that kind of goes with the whole comfort thing. This is a very comfortable car to drive. Now, I have driven the Mazda CX-5, and I did find that a bit more fun to drive than this. I had a little bit more power, but it just felt more nimble overall and just felt like it had better acceleration uh, compared to this. But that said, this actually gets better fuel economy in the all-wheel drive version uh, than the all-wheel drive version of the CX-5. And the other thing that I was impressed with is that this actually gets better fuel economy than the Ford Escape that I tested, even though the Ford Escape that I tested had a smaller turbocharged engine, uh, it was a slightly lighter vehicle, and it was two-wheel drive versus this is all-wheel drive, and it's still getting slightly better fuel economy than the Ford Escape. So that is pretty impressive, uh, and considering how much cargo space you have in the back of this vehicle, you know, it is pretty practical, and you can get decent fuel economy numbers out of this. You know, I just think some of the drawbacks of it are just how fun it is to drive, uh, and the fact that you can't manually select between gear ratio. Uh, if you want to. Now that said, when you are going down a hill, uh, it actually will control the revs fairly well so you don't just accelerate really quickly. Uh, and you also do have that hill assist. So if you know if you are a little bit off-road and you're going down a steep hill or something like that, you can use that to help control uh, your deceleration. So you don't necessarily need that manual gear part. Uh, and you also do have a low gear set here which you can switch to to keep the RPMs up higher. All right, I've completed my fuel economy test course. This is approximately 53 miles, primarily highway with some city and hills mixed in. This car is rated 25 in the city, 32 on the highway. And as you can see, it achieved 33.6 miles per gallon. Okay, let's get a highway pull in here. I'll straighten out, put it in sport and turn off the vehicle dynamic control. Come to a stop, foot down. I've got cruise control set at 65. Uh, you know, you do get a decent amount of tire noise coming through the cabin, uh, not too much wind noise. Overall, it's okay, looking at about 78 decibels. Now, one of the things to note with the cruise control is that if you use it uh, as a single selection up down to go up in increments of one mile per hour, the system gets confused if you do that a lot. So you have to hold it down uh, to slow down to whatever speed you want to get to or hold it up. Uh, if I, for example, take it and I go down down all the way, it gets confused and it stops at a certain point. So there it just stopped at 57 uh, and it wouldn't let me adjust past that. And then when you kind of retouch it, it kind of jumps all over the place with the speed. So just one thing to note with that, it's a bit strange how it works. So if you just hold it down or hold it up to accelerate or decelerate, it works just fine and you can set it at whatever speed you like. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.